Welcome back to the Arizona Cardinals franchise on Madden 21, guys. And we have reached our bye week. And it's early in the season. We're only in week four. Our Cardinals are sitting at two and one on the season, coming off of back-to-back -back wins over the Niners and the Green Bay Packers. So in today's video, we're going to look at the season stats, take a look at the team schedule. Then we're going to look ahead to the remainder of the season. Also, uh, we're getting our first look at the draft board. And then we're going to take a peek at free agency. Who might we target in free agency this year and who we might have to re-sign this year? So sit back, relax, and let's jump in. So it's been a rough start for rookie quarterback Cody Walker from Grambling State. Uh, he's thrown for 596 yards, two touchdowns, and nine interceptions. It has been a bad look for C-Dub starting off. Uh, he's completing 49% of his balls. He's been sacked three times. Um, I feel like a lot of the interceptions this season have been forced balls, uh, trying to do a little bit too much. Uh, Cody has a decent arm uh, for a rookie quarterback. And, you know, his accuracies aren't too bad. He's not a deep ball thrower, though. We have to play to his strengths, which are the short and medium routes, and also allow him to get outside the pocket. He is a very athletic QB, 85 speed, 93 acceleration, 83 agility. Uh, you know, at Grambling, he showed a lot of mobility, uh, able to get outside the pocket, extend plays. We need to allow him to do that here. Uh, the only problem with that is we don't have the offensive line to really allow him to do that. And I think that plays a big part in it. Uh, he gets hit when he throws a lot. Uh, his his um, his quarter or his throwing motion is very slow, uh, but I think once he gets settled in, and once he kind of gets used to this offense, he's going to be a dangerous player. But as we talk about dangerous players, there's none more dangerous than J.K. Dobbins this year. 78 carries, 519 yards with five touchdowns. He's averaging 173 yards per game. J.K. broke out uh, two weeks ago against the Niners, had a monster day, and he kept that momentum going against the Packers. Uh, he is our offense right now, and we're riding him. Pause. He is doing a great job finding cutback lanes, following behind his blockers, getting to that second level, making people miss. Uh, he is showing why he was a key signing this offseason. And because J.K. is having such a breakout year, it's taking away carries from Ronald Jones. Uh, I do want to get Rojo going in this offense. I feel like he's a valuable part of this offense. Uh, he's only got 13 carries for 68 yards and a touchdown. Uh, there's C-Dub, Cody Walker, six carries, 59 yards and a score. And because the quarterback play has been so bad, it's taking a toll on our wide receivers. Even though T. Higgins is having a solid start to the year, uh, 15 grabs for 232. Uh, no touchdowns yet. Uh, Andy Isabella, 12 catches, 118, and uh, he's got two scores. Then you've got Dobbins, nine catches, 71 yards. Jarwin has been a great find for us, seven catches, 105 on the season. And then Keith Miller, he's off to a slow start, five catches for 58 yards. I really want to get him more involved in the offense. I feel like he's a dynamic player, uh, and he could bring a lot to this team. Then you've got Charleston Rambo here with tw two catches for 12 yards. Uh, I think, like I said before, like I, I think once Cody gets more comfortable in the offense, the passing numbers will start to go up. Uh, but we've got to get these guys the ball. There are a lot of, a lot of good weapons here uh, with Higgins, Isabella, and Co and Keith Miller. To the defense side of the ball we go. Isaiah Simmons leading the team with 26 tackles. I'm expecting big things from uh, Simmons this year. Uh, we've got him playing all over the field. He'll come in and play. Uh, outside linebacker, he'll play nickel linebacker, and then we'll drop him off in coverage uh, in some packages as well. Then you've got Patrick Queen, second on the team with 20 tackles uh, and a sack. Jalen Thompson has 14 tackles. Kevon Wallace has 14 as well. Greedy has 13. Javon Diggs has 10. Then you have Gregory uh, Russo, nine tackles, two and a half sacks. Jordan Elliott, he's got nine tackles and a sack. Starks has eight. You got Jacobs with seven, and so does Pat Pete. Uh, then you've got Javier Bass. He's got six tackles and a half a sack. I think we do a good job uh, again after the quarterback. Russo has two and a half sacks. Queen has one. Elliott has one, and Bass has a half a sack. Um, I would love to see our outside guys get a lot more pressure. One 
position I am definitely looking to upgrade this offseason is the D tackle position. Uh, I feel like we have a solid group there, but we need a guy who could come in and pass rush, fill gaps, and be that strong inside presence that we need. And in the turnover department, Trevon Diggs, three interceptions this season, and you've got Tavon starts with one, and Pat P has one as well. Uh, the secondary is doing a solid job, man. They did a great job against the Niners, five interceptions of Jimmy G. Uh, and against the Packers, not too bad. Uh, gave up a couple big plays, but as the se season continues on and we start playing like the Seattles and guys like that, our, our secondary is really going to get tested and they're going to have to step up big time. Patrick Queen has forced one fumble. Uh, we have not recovered any, and I think we have one defensive touchdown. Yes, Trevon Diggs with a pick six. Kicking game, Fairbender's doing a great job, man. He's perfect. Three for three with a long of 41, nine of nine on extra points. Punt game, Elam has such a strong leg. Uh, eight punts for 377 yards, two inside the 20. Uh, the return game, Roundtree is good. 13 returns for 297 on kickoffs, and then on punt, six for 33. But like I said, everything kind of comes back full circle to Cody Walker. We got to get him more comfortable in this offense. We got to get him uh, to where he is uh, playing, as, playing, playing up to his standards. Um, I feel like, again, we're trying to force the ball downfield too much, and that's not his game. The underneath stuff, the medium route, that's his game, and we've got to know that uh, going into the rest of the season if we plan on winning uh, more games. So let's take a look at the team schedule. Uh, we started the season off with a tough loss to the Jets. This was Cody's first start in the NFL. He threw five interceptions. Uh, we were able to bounce back on the back of J.K. Dobbins, beat the Niners 38-28, to then beat our former quarterback, Mark Turner, uh, and the Green Bay Packers 20-17. That was a sweaty game. We're in our bye week right now, much needed. Uh, guys have been definitely practicing, enjoying their time off. Uh, but we got to get back and get ready for the Seahawks. We hit the road going out to Seattle to take on Russ Wilson uh, and, those, and that dangerous group of receivers, JK or DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. Uh, then we come back home, play uh, Buffalo on a short week. Uh, we hit the road again to take on the Patriots. Two home games back to back. It's the Rams versus the Lions. Uh, then week 10, we're back on the road taking on the Chicago Bears. Home for week 11, taking on the Seahawks. Hit the road again, taking on the Falcons. Come back home on a short week to take on the Giants. And then we are uh, home again versus the Dolphins. And we close out the season on the road. Uh, the Niners, Rams, and Vikings, our last three games. So there are a lot of tough teams on the schedule. I'm not going to lie, the Seahawks games have me a little nervous. Uh, and so does this, um, this Rams game. Uh, you know, the Rams are always a good team. Great defense. Aaron Donald on that defensive line. It's going to be tough, man. I, I predicted that we would win like seven games at the beginning of the season. Uh, I'm going to stick to that. I think we might go eight and eight. We'll see, though. Uh, this team really has to kind of rally around Cody Walker and get him more into the offense. So here's a look at the early standings in the NFL. The Ravens, the only undefeated team so far, 3-0. and Then you got the Seahawks at 2-1. The Lions... Browns, Bengals, Broncos, Titans, Jags, Jets, Bills, Cardinals, Washington football team, the Saints, Panthers, Chargers, Falcons, Cowboys, Vikings, all 2-1. and one. The Rams and Niners are at 1-1 one and one with a tie. Uh, they played against each other and got the tie, obviously. Then you've got the Bears, Patriots, Dolphins, Eagles, Giants, Chiefs, Colts, and Packers at 1-2. and two. Now you've got a handful of teams that are 0 and 3. The Steelers, Raiders, Bucks, and Texans. Wow, that's crazy. In the NFC West, you've got two 2 and 1 teams with the Seahawks and the Cardinals. We've given up almost 90 points this season, guys. Uh, then you've got the Rams and Niners, uh, 1 and 1, 1 and 1 on the season. We play the Seahawks coming out of our bye week. Again, it makes me a little nervous taking on Russell Wilson, DK Metcalf, DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. I know it's a little early in the season, but we've got some players that are looking to get re-signed. Uh, we've got some key guys that we should think about bringing back. First up is Daniel Faale. Faale? Faale? I'm probably butchering his name. The big right tackle, 6'8", 400 pounds. 
great run blocker, but cannot pass block to save his life. He's looking for a two-year deal for 13 mil. Then we got Jake Matthews at the left tackle position. Uh, we brought him in just to have as a plug-and-play player. Uh, I'm looking to get younger at that left tackle position. Uh, offensive lineman regressed terribly in Madden. And, I, you know, he's solid right now, but I think it's only going to get worse as the season goes on. Kerry Vincent is somebody I'm thinking about bringing back. Great speed, great coverage ability. Uh, hopefully, hoping, I'm hoping that Pat P decides to retire as a Cardinal after this season. Um, you know, I signed him just for that reason, but he has been a great addition to that secondary room. Marquise Blair, seeing some playing time uh, here and there on defense uh, at free safety. We'll think about bringing him back. I'm also looking to upgrade that free safety position. Blake Jarwin, been a great relief, like a great outlet for uh, Cody Walker uh, at tight end. But again, getting up there in age, he'll be 31 this year. We'll have to wait and see what happens with that. We did pick up Craig Manning from Grambling State, uh, the rookie free safety. We got him on a one-year deal after he was cut in the preseason. Uh, he has not seen the field yet. He's 6'7", 215 pounds, solid speed, solid uh, coverage ability, and solid tackling. Uh, I think he would be a great weapon for this team in the future. Is he the future at free safety? I don't know. This draft class is deep with great free safeties. We'll take a look at that here in a few minutes. Leon Jacobs is a great depth outside linebacker uh, because we do run a lot of nickel with uh, or Patrick Queen and Isaiah Simmons. Jacobs is the odd man out, uh, but I would love to bring him back because of his speed, tackling, and hit power ability. We got Gabe Jackson sitting here on the offensive line at uh, left guard. Again, one of those players that could plug and play. He'll be 34 this offseason. He's going to regress a little bit more, but he's doing a great job opening up run lanes for J.K. We got to get Charleston Rambo more involved in the offense. I think he's such a great weapon at wide receiver. He did a great job with the Panthers when he was there, uh, but he's behind three other really good wide receivers. So we got to find a way to get him on the field. Tariq Thompson, uh, an outside linebacker, he might be able to walk. So Alton Robinson, uh, Deontay Bradham, uh, Sharif Finch. Uh, one guy I really want to bring back is Jamal Williams. 69 overall, great speed. He's got hidden development as a rookie. Uh, again, it's just tough because we have such a deep group of wide receivers that he's not seeing any playing time. We'll probably let Caleb Wilson walk at tight end. Same with Josh Dobbs at quarterback, Zach Hendricks. And uh, Rashad Lawrence is an interesting player. Uh, we might look to bring him back maybe on a two-year deal. But again, you know, I'm looking to get a really big stud type defensive tackle. Uh, somebody who can make plays off on the line. And Rashad hasn't seen that field the field too much this year. So we got a chance to look at our free free agents coming up this season. Uh, but let's take a look around the league to see who is going to be a free agent and if we should go after somebody. Now, this is interesting. He's a little bit older. He'll be 34 this offseason, but Fletcher Cox will be a free agent at the end of this year. Uh, he's 6'4", 310 pounds. And if you know anything about football, Fletcher Cox is a monster. Look at him. Look at the strength, the block shedding, the power moves, the play rec, the tackling ability. This is somebody that could come in and really make an impact on our defensive line. Here's some offensive line help. This is Wyatt Davis down in Jacksonville, 6'4", 310, 24 years of age. And he's got some solid traits at guard. 93 strength, 80 run blocking, 77 pass block. Uh, we probably let go of uh, Gabe Jackson this year uh, because he is getting up there in age. But Wyatt Davis could come in and be an immediate starter for us and really help out that offensive line. They got some decisions to make in Green Bay. A lot of guys on one-year deals that are going to be looking for money. Chaz Surrett, uh, you got uh, Fryermuth at tight end. Bakiari, the big left tackle, he's going to be a free agent. They're going to have some decisions to make. Hill at corner. Davis on the defensive line, Agba on the defensive line. Uh, we might be able to snag one of those guys, man. There's McGovern. We got a center. We're good there. Here's our old squad, the Panthers. Um, they've got 24 mil in cap. We got Kyle Pitts on the last year of his deal. Uh, Linderbaum. We're good at center, though. There's Brown. I don't want him. He's too hurt. He's hurt every year. 
Rucker's going to be a free agent. Rico's going to be a free agent. Shaka Tony's going to be a free agent. Stearns, there's Stanley, Moat, and they've got a lot of guys on one-year deals that are going to be looking for big money. And Ian Thomas, we need a tight end. We need a tight end. So if we could get any of these three tight ends that are going to be free agents between Rucker, Ian Thomas, or Kyle Pitts, that would definitely help out our passing game. Uh, I would love to get somebody like Kyle Pitts because you could split them out, um, have him play wide receiver, 6'5", 239, Great speed, catching ability. Uh, the route running still needs a little work, but, you know, we can work on that. He's more of a receiver threat than he is a uh, blocking tight end threat. Uh, here's a young left tackle that's going to be a free agent. This is Dylan Radden, Raddins, third year, 6'6", 301. Uh, solid traits, you know what I mean? More of a run blocker. I would probably put him at right tackle before I put him at left tackle. Um, you know, but again, New England's got a lot of money, so they're probably going to go ahead and bring him back because he is a solid player. Okay, wait a minute. Who is this? Christian Barmore. Oh, this is the dude from Bama, 6'5", 310. He's going to be a free agent this year, fellas. Great strength and block shedding, great power move and finesse move, great tackling, and at, what is he? 6'5", 310. With 73 speed, we'll take that. We got to make sure we keep an eye on that. Uh, the Raiders do have a lot of money, though, so they'll probably bring him back. But that's the kind of player we're looking for, somebody that could come in and be an impact on that defensive line. Ooh, this is going to be tough for them. The Rams are in a tough spot. Jared Goff and Cooper Cup are both free agents this year. Which one do they bring back? Which one do they let walk? They'll probably bring Cup back. Or golf back, excuse me. I and no I and Ionatis. He's gonna be a free agent. Big defensive tackle. Allen. This is a guy we wanted la a couple years ago. Jonathan Allen. I was looking to trade for him uh when we were with the Panthers. 6'3, 300 pounds. He'll be 30 this year. But great traits, man. Great strength, block shedding, power move. Uh the speed really isn't there, but yo, he can get after the QB. McCoy will be a free agent at center. Can he play any other position? Oh, man, we could put him anywhere on the offensive line. 6'4", 315. We might be able to kick him outside and play left tackle. Oh, yeah, or guard. We'll have to keep an eye on Eric McCoy from the Saints. He'll be a free agent. They'll probably end up bringing him back and allowing a lot of guys to walk. Cisco's not a bad pickup either at free safety. Andre Cisco. Uh, he was their first-round pick a few years ago. 90 speed, 86 zone, 77 tackle. That's the kind of free safeties I like to have on the team. Slater at right tackle. Okay, Rashawn Slater, 6'4", 315, three years out of college. He's 25. I mean, more of a pass blocker than he is a run blocker. I honestly think I would move him to the, to the left tackle position over right tackle at 6'4", 315. Deron Payne, this guy was a pain for real. Deron Payne, a big defensive tackle from Alabama, 6'3", 319, 27 years of age. This is another guy I think could come in and be a plug-and-play player, man. We would pay him on, on everything. We would pay this guy to come in and be a star for our defense. Uh, great pursuit, great strength, block shed, power move. We definitely got to write him down, circle this guy, and keep an eye out. They're going to have to let some guys walk because they don't have a lot of money going into the, or the end of the season. Montez Sweat, Mayfield. Jalen Mayfield, 6'5", 319 from Michigan. Not bad. Those are solid. Those are solid. Howard at right tackle. Titus Howard. 6'5", 322 from Alabama State. Plays for the Texans right now. Yeah, yeah. See, that's more like it. That's more like it. I like to have, like, a balanced right tackle. Great run blocking skills. Gate, uh, solid pass blocking skills. Um, yeah. We're probably going to pay him a bag, though. Sam Cosme. Third year left tackle. 6'7", 300 pounds. Plays with the Vikings right now. And they're probably going to pay him a bag to stay with the team. 
He's the number 11 ranked left tackle in the league right now. Great bla pass blocking traits. Yeah, that's the kind of player we we would be needing at left tackle. A Rob will be a free agent. They got oh ooh, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Eddie Jackson is said to be a free agent this year with the Bears. Six foot two oh four. The free safety from Bama. Kind of on the slower side, 89 speed, but great zone coverage and great tackling, though. Yeah. If he's a free agent, man, I think we got to make a play for him. I think we got to make a play for Ejack. Mike McGlitchy is going to be a free agent from the Bills. 6'8", 3'10", right tackle. And my God, we can run behind him all day. 94 run block. Yeah. Yeah. We got to remember him, too. They have, like, the Bills are tapped right now. They've got a lot of free agents, a lot of key pieces that they need to bring back. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that they, they will pay McGlitchy to stick around. Now, I like to look at, like, team salary cap just to see where each team is at and who they have to resign. Like, Eric Stokes would be a great pickup for us. 92 speed, 89 man coverage, 83 press. He fits what Aeneas Williams likes to do on defense. And because the Browns are tapped in salary cap, they only have $630,000 in cap room. Players like Stokes will have will probably end up walking. So, I mean, as you can see, there are a lot of players out there uh, that we could go out and pick up in free agency this year. We're, we're way under the cap. We're at $81 million in cap space right now. Um, but I don't want to go too crazy. Uh, I think we do need help on that offensive line for sure. Defensive line, uh, maybe another corner. But I think offensive line is definitely one of the main pieces that I want to look at. Offensive line and D-tackle for sure. Um, and I think, you know, in free agency, we can make those moves. But let's take a look at the draft board for the first time this year. So here is a look at the draft board. And the number one player on the board is Zach Allen. Quarterback from Ohio State, 6'5", 236. Also on Mel Kuyper's big board, you've got Caleb Kelly, defensive end from Penn State, number two player on the board. Kerry Easley, left outside linebacker from LSU, is third. You got James McBride, a right tackle from OSU. Marcus Gibson, a free safety from Utah. Then you've got Dylan Jones, a strong arm quarterback from Alabama. A lot of Ohio State players here in the top ten. Mike Gaddis at wide receiver, six foot one eighty seven, a deep threat. Then you've got a running back. The, the first running back on the board is Adam Brooks from Auburn, elusive, six foot two twenty. You got Eric Newby at middle linebacker from Oregon. He's number nine. And then rounding out your top ten is Kadeem Jones, a big left tackle from Michigan. Uh, there are some players here from uh, the Arkansas A and M dynasty. You've got quarterback Todd Robertson. Six foot five, two twenty five, strong arm QB. Uh, you know he led the country, I think, in his senior year in passing yards. Definitely broke the record at A and M for most yards in a season. Uh, right now he has a projected undrafted grade, but I think he might be a, a sleeper. Another player to keep your eye on is Jonathan Keys, the running back from A and M. Uh, if you remember, uh, in his senior year, he broke his neck uh, and he was limited in playing time. He decided to not return back to school, but to go into the NFL draft. And right now he has a sixth round grade. At tight end, one of the best tight ends in the country last season was David Jones from Arkansas A&M. Uh, he is 6'5", 260, and right now he has a sixth round grade on him. At left tackle, a fan favorite, Andrew Woods from AM, 6'7, 306. At left guard, there's Trey Simpson from AM, 6'3, 332. At center, Eddie Valentine, he has a third round grade on him. Uh, he was a starter all four years at AM, 6'4, 330 pounds. At right tackle, Big Vince Smith, 6'7, 300 pounds. He's got a seventh round grade on him. To the defense side of the ball, we go D-tackle Steven Wilson from AM, 6'3", 265. He's got a fifth-round grade on him. Then we have Tyson Kidd, the outside linebacker from AM, 6'2", 240, a seventh-round grade. Up the middle was the captain, 
James Ryan at middle linebacker. He was voted best linebacker his senior year. Uh, 6'1", 245. He has a second round grade on him. Then we've got a pair of corners from AM that could sneak into the seventh round. First up is Mike Davis, uh, 6 foot 192. Great man to man coverage ability. And then there's Mark Prince. He's an interesting prospect. 5'10, 170 pounds. Uh, they've got him listed as a slot corner. Played a lot of slot from AM. Uh, they were expecting big things from him his senior year. Kind of showed flashes here and there, but uh, it's going to be interesting. It's interesting to see what teams do with him. He's a really good returner as well. But I personally think that this is the best player in the draft right now. Chauncey Kraft at free safety from AM. 5'10, 188. He's a ball hawk who's not afraid to come down and make a tackle. Uh, I think for our Cardinals, we need somebody like this. Uh, we've got two stellar linebackers in Isaiah Simmons and Patrick Queen. But we need somebody on that deep half that can go out and make a play. And I think Chauncey Kraft is that guy. He's got a third round grade on him right now. And the last player from AM on the board is Kelly Clark at kicker, 5'11, 183. Very strong leg, but the accuracy is a concern. Now, guys, I need your help. Should I add the uh, Corey Gonzalez class to this draft to kind of catch up? If we add the Corey Gonzalez class to this draft class, uh, we would be caught up. So at the end of this season with the seniors that are graduating from a and they'll be kind of waiting to get into the next draft class for the Cardinals. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments section. I'm up to doing both. Right now, I would say we are two, we're going to be two draft classes behind uh, in this series. So let me know what you guys think. So guys, that's going to wrap it up for the bye week. I think there's going to be a bright future with this team. Uh, with that $88 million in salary cap, a lot of key free agents going to be on the market at the end of the season, and the draft is stocked. This team could turn around quickly. Now, we do have a rule on this channel and in this dynasty that we're only allowed to go after one big major free agent this or in the offseason, and then we add just key pieces here and there. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what we're be, what the kind of moves Coach uh, Franklin will be able to make. Um, also, the draft is going to be a big thing too, man. But we've got a long season ahead of us. It's only week four, and we're going into week five. We got to take on our division rivals, the Seahawks, up in Seattle. So that means we got to deal with the twelfth man and their fans. Uh, and the rest of the season is going to be tough, man. We got to buckle our chin straps and get Cody Walker uh, comfortable in this offense. It's a long road, but we're ready for it. And I think Coach Franklin and the fellas are ready too, man. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you're brand new. Don't forget to ring that bell. Join the Noti Squad. And make sure you guys hit those links down in my description. Follow your boy on Facebook, Twitter, and IG. And come through and join the Discord fan for exclusive content. We'll talk from Seattle when we take on the 2-1 and one Seahawks. Have a great day, guys. Two fingers in the air. Peace. Big thank you to all the members of the channel and the Patreons. If you would like to become a member or a Patreon, hit the links down below in my description.